Kid, seriously. Welcome to another scrumptious episode of the Kid Seriously Show, the only podcast around that's really big in Europe. Every now and again, we get together to discuss the world, play our world tri- famous trivia question game show, discuss other things from Nerdland that might tickle our fancy. And once in a while, we're going to review a trailer movie or what have you. To my left, it's everyone's favorite journalist, son of Skyen and Skyen, and he of the gold sounds, it's Luke Neitzel, and then there's me, Maya Madrid, who reminds you that aloha means goodbye, but also a hello. It's in how you inflect. Put the bark in the dog and you've got a guardian. When the capital's J, it is followed by a V, and it's probably me. And the tones are grouped in clusters. Luke Neitzel, how are you? Have you ever seen the movie Pleasantville? I have not. Do you know what it's about? Uh, I don't know. Is that the black and white one? Yeah, where it's Tobey Maguire and Reese Witherspoon, and they kind of get sucked into this like 50s type yeah. town and stuff, and it's black and white, but then as people kind of gain self-awareness and and all these things, they, they become colorized mm-hmm. in the movie. And that's what my reality is now, because I now live in the post-Aquaman world. Yeah, I see. Yes. So now colors Full are more color. vibrant. Sure. Food tastes better. Right. I went to bed last night, and my pillow was softer. Wine tastes better, which, as you know, if you see Aquaman, you can use to kill people in its liquid form. So I'm, I'm fantastic. Wine is mostly water, as, our, as is our bodies. It's true. They probably could have solved a lot of problems if they just would have killed people that way in the movie. So I think you must have really liked your time with Aquaman. It, it was fine. It's exactly what you would think it is from the trailer. So if you saw that and you bought into it, you'll probably have a good time. It's cheesy. It's over dramatic. I couldn't figure out during it if... At first, I was really annoyed by the music because it's way over dramatic. And then halfway through, I was like, maybe this is genius. Maybe they're doing this intentionally or ironically or whatever. Uh, type deal. So it's dumb. Momo is really good in that role, and he's not as broy as people tend to to think he's going to be. So don't don't rush out and see it. Rush out and see into the Spider Verse if you're going to see a movie. But rent it or watch it on TBS. That's what I would, I would say. Speaking of movies that you should rent or watch on TBS, I saw Bumblebee this week. And oh, how's that? You, it was dumb, but fun. If you saw the trailers and bought into that, you would have really enjoyed it. And if you didn't, you probably wouldn't have. But let me tell you, as a person who boycotted the Transformers movies, not because they were pieces of shit, and not because of the latent uh, racism in some Oof. of the later ones, but boycotted them because they didn't have Bumblebee as a Volkswagen bug. Well, they brought it home this time around. It was exactly everything you thought a by-the-book kind of generic movie, but it had Bumblebee, so I liked it. I had it described to me by someone as uh, a, a a puppy and a, yes! a, a master-type relationship, yes! but Bumblebee is the puppy. So Yeah, it was great. It was very cute. And did Boom awesome. go? Did she like it? No, Boom did not okay. go. Um, she doesn't appreciate Camaro versus Volkswagen. No, she really doesn't have a, no. She doesn't have a, a nuanced appreciation of 1980s cartoons. Uh, much more excited for the Grinch, as you might remember. She uh, was part of our Maya and Luke does a trailer. Maya and Luke saw a trailer back in the day for the Grinch movie. So she's gonna head to the Grinch. With, awesome. with Grandpa Madrid, and uh, I might sit that one out, but. Sounds like everybody wins. Hey, speaking of everybody wins, uh, we're going to get right to Stephen Malkmus's favorite game show. It's Am I Right or Am I Wrong? We don't have Mark tonight. He's at home listening to Pavement on Vinyl. But it, uh, in true American style, our contestant is going to offer up earnest opinions, which will either be taken as fact or immediately mocked by our moderator. Here, how our, here is how our one-player version of the game works. There are seven questions, which Luke will administer tonight. Because I have family in town and I'm too fucking tired to do it. So, uh, Luke, I'm tired. I am weary. I could sleep for 1,000 years. I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. Well, I'm just going to dive right in while you're still awake because right. it may not last. But as I, I mentioned... Or... Is it not going to last because I'm going to totally destroy it? Is that what's going to happen? You're going to crush it, man. All right. You're going to kill it. I like it. So today is the day before Christmas Eve or, you know, December 23rd. Uh, PA, because that's now what I'm going by, which is post Aquaman years, because life has changed. So, guess where we're going to start? In the, uh, the worlds of DC or the DCEU. You know how I love it. You do love it. You do love it. There have been six movies mm. in the, the worlds of DC continuity, if you can call it that, though I will say it makes more sense than X Men continuity at this stage. 
That's not really saying much. That's not saying (laughs) anything at all, to be honest. The six movies, in no particular order, or maybe the order they came out, you be the judge, Uh, are Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, Justice League, and Aquaman. Now, we obviously have debated the merits of different metrics to rate movies over the years, so we're going to go with the metrics that you leaned a little bit more towards. Now, each of these movies has received a critic score on Rotten Tomato and a fan score on Rotten Tomato. And what I've done is added those two scores together to create a total score for each movie and then figured out what order they would fall in on total order. So we're going to see how close you can get of those six movies of picking the order that they would fall in on total score combined critic and fan. Oh, this is going to be brutal. I'm going to go number one, Wonder Woman. I'm going to go... Let me know if you need me to reread any of the number movie names. Number two... I'm going to actually go Justice League. Number three, I'll go Man of Steel, which is wrong. I'm going to back out of Man of Steel and go Suicide Squad because the audience score was very high for that. Then I'll go Man of Steel, and then I'll go BVS. Did I? And then Aquaman, I don't I don't know. I mean, no, Aquaman's got to be really high. Can I, can I fit yeah, Aquaman yeah, in between one and two? I'm going to say that that was, in between, that was actually two. So, so that, that would be so you went... Wonder Woman, uh, Aquaman. Suicide Squad? S- no, uh, Justice League. Justice League. Suicide Squad. Um, Man of Steel, which is a shame because I think that's the best one of them all. And then BVS. All right, well... You you start out with a bang here, yeah. and, and this was easy. I think anyone could have come out now out of 200 possible percentage points right. or whatever. Wonder Woman has a, a total score of 181. It is by far number one. It is 93 critic and 88 fan. Coming in at number two, Aquaman. Hey, see? Yep. So you were two for two there. Aquaman is at 149. So it is a 63 critic. But it has an 86 fan rating, which is just Seems too like it less. Gave, gave everybody what they wanted. Yeah, it did. It's just too less than Wonder Woman. Except for me, which is not to have a movie. So. Well, yeah. But I had so many of my own movies that were given to me this year that I feel I feel magnanimous. You, you, you can have this. You one. know what the beauty of movies is? You don't have to see it. I know, and I won't. Number three, unfortunately, you talked yourself out of it because you had it, it was right. Man of Steel. It was Man of Steel. Wow, I, I think I got so down about how that all went because it missed the, the certified fresh. So I think it... Uh... Well, I'm going to drop a spoiler on here. Yeah. Critic scores are not going to be in a favor of a lot of these movies. What? So uh, Man of Steel comes in at 131, which is 56 cri- uh, critics score. Okay. And then 75 on the fan score. Makes sense. Good so movie. Good movie. Yeah. Yeah. So cr- right now we're looking critics and, and fans. Well, actually throughout the whole thing, critics and fans, they go in the same order, even though their percentages vary. So number four is Justice League. Which has 113 points. More than Suicide Squad. More than Suicide Squad. It's a better movie. Suicide Squad has, or Justice League has a 40% critic rating. So we just, we, I mean, that's a 53 per, 53 point drop from Wonder Woman. Yeah. Four movies ahead of it. And then it has a 73 fan. So it's very close to Man of Steel in there. Next, in fifth place, we go to BVS, which has a 90. Uh, it has a 27 critic score <laughs> and a 63 fan score. So you're saying the Oscar-winning... Suicide Squad really? is number is six. It is an yeah. awful movie. I actually, in just... my definitive DC rankings, which I think I texted you earlier this week, I actually put it at five because it's so dumb and bad that I actually enjoy the chaos of it, whereas BVS just makes me mad mm-hmm. when I watch it. But Suicide Squad is last. It's only three points behind BVS. It's at 87. It has a 27 critic score and a 60 fan score. So, you got two out of four, but you got the big two to start with, so what the hell, it's arbitrary. I'll give you the point on that one. And I got you to talk about DC for a while, and I'm going to kick up the paper in the mic. Guess what? It's uh, it's the holiday season. You've given me a great gift. It is. It is. So so enjoy that. So now we're going to we're gonna shift gears a little, but we're going to kind of stick with our Will Smith theme since right. we were talking Suicide Squad. I always love to talk Will Smith. A few months back, we broke down the trailer for the upcoming live action adaptation of Aladdin. And the one thing that was missing from that trailer is we got nothing of Will Smith's genie. Right. But now there's a cover story on Entertainment Weekly that shows a, a full spread, and it's got Smith looking very similar to 90s comic Sinbad. Surprising to me is he wasn't CGI. Now they say there is going to be CGI added to him, but I thought it was going to be a completely CGI'd Andy Circus type uh, performance, but he's not. 
but really what's important about this is that he looks like Sinbad. My favorite 90s comedian and everyone's 90s favorite comedian. So thinking about Sinbad, I want you to tell me who's your favorite forgotten 90s star. Well, um, the guy who the guy that immediately jumps to mind, um, and he he had the looks, he had the attitude, he had the acting chops, and unfortunately was in a very bad car accident, or probably would have been a much bigger star. I'm gonna go Jason Priestley here. Jason Priestley, I think, was uh, set for stardom, and it just never happened for him. Close second, River Phoenix. <laughs> I love the look on your face. I wish I, I I'm just dumbfounded that you yeah. just praised the acting chops of Jason Priestley. Which... I loved I loved 90210 when I was a fifth grader. But I loved it. It's a very it's a very shocking statement, and then the fact that you followed it up with basing it on acting talent, and then you followed it up with, but River Phoenix would be second yep. behind him. Well, I'm talking about the whole package, <laughs> man. I'm talking about star power. Who was more successful? River Phoenix or Jason Priestley? Uh, River Phoenix, by far. Mm, I don't know about that. Box office budget-wise, Oscar nomination-wise. Dude, I think you're underselling Hanging out with Flea at the Viper Room-wise. River <laughs> Phoenix has, has done way, way more. The correct answer written on paper is, of course, Alicia Silverstone. Oh, yeah. Because Clueless cool. was amazing, and was. she was really good in it, and she did nothing other than that. And if it wasn't for that, we'd only know her from Aerosmith videos. So... Well, I think you're forgetting her turn in Batman and Robin, which uh, was was well regarded and loved, and uh, really set the superhero genre forward by a decade or two, and really brought. Oh wait, that's not the truth. No, All it right. de- derailed a really profitable franchise for like ten years, I know. and it then was she did a terrible. I almost walked out of it. The moment where they touched their heels together and skates came out, that was the moment a little piece of me died. I waited for that movie forever, and I applaud you that your soul lasted that long into that movie before it died. <laughs> Wait, actually, that wasn't the, probably the opening sequence. It was. Anyways, we're going to move on and not talk about that movie. Oh, you, I thought you wanted to talk about DC. But not that movie. Oh, okay. Just, just the good ones, like Aquaman. <laughs> BBS. So you are you are one and one. Uh, yeah, one and one right now. Right. Aladdin is far from the only live action. This is question three, by the way. Okay. Aladdin is far from the only live action Disney movie we have coming to theaters, and we've already gotten a barrage of them. And an all-star cast is currently finishing up an adaptation of The Lion King. Now, the unique thing about The Lion King in comparison to these other Disney live-action adaptations is it features no actual human characters. So it's it's all CGI. And The Jungle Book was basically that, but you still did have Mowgli, who was a little boy, playing in the role. And this is brought Let's up a... Let's call de- him Mogwai. Mogwai? <laughs> yeah, from Gremlins. So okay, I'm we can sorry. call him Mogwai. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> don't spill the water on him. The... The Lion King debate has started, and the question is, should this live adaptation of Jon Favreau's making of The Lion King, is that count as a live-action movie or an animated movie? Well, the thing is, if you don't believe that it counts as a live-action movie, you need something else, because it's something different entirely than animated. So if you, I would feel like if you don't consider it live-action, you would have to create a third category, which is being a little cumbersome. Look, these are actual actors doing the actual things uh, using their face and um, their gesticulations to get their performance across. I'm going to call it live action. You are 100% correct. What we have written down is it is live action. They're live actors acting out the characters. It's not just voice work. They're not just stepping into a studio. So this is 100% live action and should count as such and be appreciated as such. So you are looking pretty good here. You are 2-1. Just ahead of the, ahead of the, ahead of the, uh, the sticks. We're, we're heading into question four. And I actually made you do some homework for this one. It's hard to remember that other movies are coming out because, of course, we all are bursting with Aquaman fever right now. Right. But the cinema just keeps marching on. Oh, I don't like this where this one's going. We both know we are lovers of classic literature. Oh, God. The works of uh, you know Sir Arthur Conan Doyle will soon be returning to the screen, yes. as Will Ferrell and John C. Riley are going to be starring in Holmes and Watson. Now, Ferrell is clearly the bigger star, but I think you can make the argument that John C. Riley is the most interesting and eclectic actor there is out there, especially with the giant body of work he has put forth. I made you look up John C. Riley's history. Tell me what your favorite John C. Riley movie is. Talladega Nights. I mean, there's no question. I didn't even have to look it up. I knew what the question was going to be. Talladega Nights. Talladega Nights is one of my favorite comedies it is absolutely hilarious uh when you put him with will ferrell and then bring in sasha baron cohen um it was and then you've got um uh, uh amy uh oh, why, why is my it's late um 
You bring Lois Lynn into it. Is she in that one? Yeah, she is. Oh, wow. It's absolutely fantastic. And there's, it's so quotable, and it's one of the great ones. It's not underappreciated comedies of all time. It's Talladega Nights, and it's not close. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the point, because, you know, it's Christmas, and why not? That wasn't what I had written down. My, my favorite movie of his is actually available on Netflix, and it is a completely crazy indie movie called The Lobster, starring him, Carl and Farrell, Rachel Weisz. Um, it's, Fred, that's really good. it's amazing. It's what Wes Anderson wishes he could make. So I, I suggest everyone go see that. And then I also threw out, you know, you got to give a shout out to Boogie Nights cause that movie's amazing. I and forgot that he was in that. He's, he's great in that too, but I, I will accept your answer and we will go into question four three and one. with you at three and one dominating, dominating this game from start to finish. And maybe it's just the fact that I'm in my Aquaman glow that I'm just feeling charitable because that's what Could be. that's what Jason Momoa or it's does just to the me. Talladega Nights is fucking unbelievable. You know, I saw it, but I don't remember that much from it to be honest. It's so so good. maybe it's I need so to rewatch good. it. Question five. This is a horrible news on the NHL front for our beloved Minnesota Wild because we have lost. Oh. Our defenseman, Matt Dumba, to injury, and what we first thought could be weeks now looks like it might be months or season-ending, and that is not good. He was having a career year. Three months into the season, he was two goals away from his career high and five goals away from the all-time record for a wild defenseman. Hitting the hell out of people, too. Love yeah. that about him. It, a great, great player, and look at where our offense has gone in the last few weeks. So this is a, a brutal blow. Now... Listeners of our show know that you are a Packer fan, so you've endured some pretty horrific sports injuries that have completely derailed seasons when one player goes down. But what is the most heartbroken you've ever been about a defensive player going down to injury? Well, that's a great question. Um, you're probably going to want to cut this because it's going to take a long for me to really think about. You take it on faith, you take it to heart. The waiting is the hardest part. There's an octopus in Aquaman that plays the drums. Please cut this out. This is such bad podcasting. I can't think, because now I'm thinking about this. Oh, it, you know what? Um, there was a strong safety for the Packers, number 36, Nick Collins, who broke a bone in his neck and had to retire. He couldn't come back from it. Um, he was a... A player that led us uh, to the Super Bowl, and he was one of the great players of all time. Never was really able to hit his uh, hit his real uh, zenith as a player, um, but would have been right. I mean, he wore the same number as Leroy Butler, and I think he would, had he been able to have a great career, would have earned the right to at least be mentioned in the same. I don't think he'd have been as great as Butler, but he was right there and just a wonderful player. So Nick Collins for me. It's a good answer, but I can't give you the point because he plays for the Packers and I'm not a fan. Fair enough. And I, you know, you're already going to, you're already what, you're what, this makes three it and three and two now. So we'll, we'll make it a little bit of a game. The answer I had down on paper, uh, cause I thought about putting, uh, we lost Ryan Suter the wild last year, but I, I think we still would have lost in the first round of the playoffs with Ryan Suter. Yeah, so what, was very good. what I put down is Arna Friedrich on the Chicago fire because that destroyed that team for injury, and I don't think our defense has ever recovered six years later, five, six years later from him. I think that was the beginning. He organized everything. Yeah, and he made he made Austin Berry a Rookie of the Year. We all saw what happened to Austin yeah, Berry. Bar- I thought Austin Berry was a good player. Everyone, everyone did, and the yeah. minute he got away from Arna Friedrich, he couldn't stay on the field. So he was just a, a great, great player, and I think... That that ends the real descent off the cliff for the Chicago Fire was once Arna Friedrich went down, everything after that turns into the Yallop years and, and now the mess we're dealing with now. So I I really to me that's that's kind of the end of the era of actually enjoying Fire fandom and having hope and faith that they would they would go somewhere. Yeah. So two questions left. You just need to get one of the two. You gotta get one. Pressure's on. You gotta get one of the two. So we're going into number question number six and that has to do with a release date that was recently announced marvel has announced the release of the punisher on netflix that will be coming in january what this really means is that we're that much closer to the announced cancellation of the punisher on netflix dc already has a streaming service marvel owner disney is getting closer to their disney plus release date which we're going to assume is going to suck up all these properties and uh, we know that the the Marvel Netflix shows need to take two years off before they can officially launch, but they're they're going to be gone off of Netflix. Netflix has made it clear that they want to stay in the comic book industry, though. They have shows like The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Thank you, drink. I brought it up. And they also have an agreement with Mark Miller, Mark Millar, however you want to pronounce it, and Millar World. 
So what non-DC, non-Marvel comic book characters, doesn't have to be from a lot of world unless you want it to be, do you want to see brought to Netflix in a show? And this is kind of a fun question because there was a time when you weren't on the pod and I actually asked this question to Mark. Yeah, I remember that. But I actually have a different answer this time. I... The number one thing that jumped into my head actually turns out to be a DC movie, which is Swamp Thing. Um, but They're already getting a Swamp Thing show on DC streaming. Are they? Yeah, it's already um, casting and shooting. And so uh, that was the number one thing that jumped to mind. So I'm going to stay with Alan Moore here and go top ten. Um, I really enjoyed that series. It's completely, you know, like a futuristic, kind of a humorous superhero world. And so I'd go top ten would be um, the thing that I would be most interested in. Um, and I just think stuff from Alan Moore, although he'd be really pissy about it, but huh, well, who, who cares? He's kind of a weird dude. He's going to touch him. <laughs> well, we're going to give you the point, which means you're going to get the win because you said Alan Moore and I don't know much about top 10, but if Alan Moore did it. I'm more than happy to see it. Give it go. The answer I actually had written down is my personal favorite from the nun, the max. Yep. Yep. Sam Keith's the max, which is just a weird, bizarre. I don't even know how you could film it. There was a uh, liquid television on MTV did do a, a almost motion comic version, which I actually have the DVD of that really? I was able to find. Uh, but a live action attempt at that would be really, really interesting. It's a superhero story, but it's really not a superhero story. It's more about grief and tragic people trying to struggle with, with grief and sur- survival. So that would have been my answer. But uh, yeah, Alan Moore is always a good answer. So we have a winner in this game, it is going to be the one and only Maya Madrid. So now he gets to dance into question seven, a question specifically designed for him because it's the holidays, which means it's his favorite time of year. It's college bowl season time. The national championship playoff is going to get underway in the next week. We have Alabama. We have Clemson. We have Notre Dame. We have Oklahoma. Who you got? Well, before I get to what will be the shortest and most obvious answer because it's my same answer every single year, and more often than not, I'm right, and I usually make the call at the beginning of the year. I do want to talk a little bit about a comic whose name I couldn't uh, remember. I remembered it, but I kept thinking about the Mark Wahlberg movie, Invincible. Have you heard about this comic? It was created by Robert Kirkman and Corey Walker, and it is uh, about a kid who um, gets power. It's very sort of by the book, but it was really, really well done. I wish Mark was here. It's the only time you'll hear me say, I wish Mark was here. Um, so <laughs> like the example, Mark Wahlberg movie, Invincible, about the Eagles? Yeah, well, it has the same name. Oh, okay. Unfortunately. But um, that was the one I wanted to say, but I was afraid I was going to mess it up. So I want to talk a little bit about that. The answer to your question is Alabama. It's always Alabama. Okay. It's always going to be Alabama. As long as Nick Saban is coaching Alabama, you have to, and you want to, if you want to bet money, you bet on Saban every year. It's Alabama, and it won't be close. You are a winner. Thank you. Play your damn music, son. That's right.